This funky looking aircraft is the FMS Integral, an 80mm EDF sports jet inspired by the larger turbine power Integral released a few years ago backed by Tomato. The design of this jet definitely turns heads. While some people appreciate its unique aesthetic, which stands out from anything else in the market, others find its cartoon-like appearance a bit of putting. But let's get into what truly matters, its quality, performance and whether it deserves a spot in your hangar. As with many FMS models, the Integral is straightforward to assemble. The manual is clear, and with components like the motor, retracts, servos and extensions already pre-installed, the setup was a breeze. I just bolted a few parts together, connected the transmission rods and added my own receiver and battery. A nice feature in this plane is the removable battery tray. Unlike previous models where removable trays felt cumbersome and not worth the extra weight, the integral tray is user-friendly and robust, greatly facilitating quick battery swaps. I am using an SMC high voltage 4400 mAh LiPo placed towards the rear to achieve a center of gravity at 165mm from the leading edge, near the main gear. For guidance, I'm running a FreeSky Archer SR10 Plus receiver with its built-in stabilization system. Now, how does it fly? Takeoffs on good runways are as simple as they can be. With takeoff flaps, the integral doesn't need a lot of runway to take off, and maintains easy directional control both in the ground and in the air. Right off the bat, after my first takeoff, I noticed I needed a good amount of down trim to fly level. With flaps up, the Integral can fly at a comfortable speed. I've heard people talking about how fast this model is. To be honest, I haven't felt that way. If you want to do fast passes, you can certainly dive from high altitude and at full throttle to get some good speed, but I'm confident there are much faster models out there. After fine-tuning the gyro settings, I found that the 55% gain strikes the perfect balance. It stabilizes the plane during gusty conditions pretty well, while still preventing any oscillations during full throttle high speed passes. Deploying flaps does introduce significant ballooning, requiring substantial down trim adjustments. I have programmed three different flight modes on my transmitter normal, takeoff, and landing, with separate elevator trims for each to manage this tendency. Once trimmed, the plane handles predictably in all configurations. With full flaps, the integral can slow down nicely, although I would recommend always keeping a bit of speed here, as it will definitely drop a wing if you slow things down too much or if you're not careful enough with your elevator inputs. Landings with full flaps are painless if you come with a bit of throttle to keep the nose over the horizontal. Just don't overdo it with too much high alpha, or it will bite you at the worst moment close to the ground. Overall, the integral feels like a model is to fly, but I wouldn't say it's the best plane for beginners or people just getting into ADFs. When I'm reviewing a sport jet, I'm expecting the robotic performance to be significantly better than semi-scale jets like, say, a Viper jet. The development team has much more leeway on designs that are brand new, and I would hope that the flight envelope reflects that. In my opinion, here's where the integral falls a bit short. Even with a center of gravity on the rear end of the manufacturer's recommendation, the Integral doesn't feel comfortable flying on its side. Knife edge passes not only require carrying significant speed and lots of rudder, but also involve major efforts despite the gyro's help due to the significant roll and pitch coupling. As a comparison, a semi-scale plane like the E-Flight 90mm Viper makes knife edge passes much easier than the Integral. Other sports jets like the Freewind Avanti or the FMS Futura are in a completely different league and feel totally at home on their side. This subpar knife edge performance also gets reflected on any rolling maneuvers. Slow rolls and point rolls are totally doable, but the pilot definitely needs to work harder than expected just to get okay results. Rifle rolls don't look particularly clean either because of the great amount of rudder required to sustain the plane on its side. On the positive side, the Integral maintains energy very well during vertical maneuvers. While it doesn't offer unlimited vertical performance, it has enough power for maneuvers like hammerheads and large loops. Negative snap rolls are fun to perform and are easy to stop precisely where desired. Flying times with the 4400 mAh battery are around 3 to 3.5 minutes, ending with 20 to 30% remaining capacity. It would be nice to be able to use larger battery packs at around the 6,000 mAh mark for longer flights, 
but that would require some kind of modifications to balance the plane at the desired center of gravity. The general quality of the plane is actually surprisingly good. The landing gear is robust and reliable and has good suspension, although it would be nice if they used a softer material for the wheels. Overall fit and finish is really solid. It's not the lightest airframe, but the paint quality is really good and by just looking at it, it's almost hard to tell it was made out of foam. Hinges are properly installed and all pieces fit very well together. In summary, the FMS Integral is a distinctive and enjoyable 80mm EDF sports jet. It will appeal to those who favor its unique look and are not necessarily focused on precision aerobatics. However, it might not be the best choice for beginners or those seeking a high-performance aerobatic EDF. If you are in either of those camps, you might want to explore other options like the Viperjet or a Futura.